Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you are doing great. Got a story out of the sun and I think it's important because we are going to see in the next six months, restaurants, chain restaurants start to close doors like you wouldn't believe. And I believe it is because of food inflation, not only the price of food going up, so they are forced to uh, raise prices, but even if they didn't have to raise prices, quite frankly, the consumers tapped. Uh, credit card debt at all time highs. We're seeing government stimulus company uh, banks like JP Morgan are out there doing all of this rough, not rough calculation, detailed calculations showing and proving that the consumers done all of the government money they were given years ago is now drained out of their savings accounts. Remember, that's the biggest bank in the U.S. This is big news. Why? Because that means that's less money for the restaurant industry. Now, this story is about one one restaurant. I know that sounds crazy, but it was about the way that it was closed down. And that is very, very important because usually when there's bigger problems, companies like to keep it quiet, do things hush hush. So check this out. But this is a big restaurant chain. It's entitled No Going Back. Restaurant giant with 10,000 workers and hundreds of outlets suddenly closes store doors for good after 25 years in business. Let me know if you've been to an Outback Steakhouse lately. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about the food quality and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but this is a really interesting story. Check because I think this is going to be the big story going into the new year. Outback Steakhouse restaurant has shut it's down without notice to customers. Following the abrupt closure of its Myth Hewen location in Massachusetts just a few weeks ago, the chain has said goodbye to another site. So there's actually two. Um, the Outback Steakhouse in Burnsville, Minnesota, about 15 miles south of Minneapolis, suddenly closed down on Sunday after 25 years. A spokesperson for the steakhouse chain confirmed to bring me the news that the closure was due to the expiration of the restaurant's lease. Now, let me stop there and explain the reason why we are having such a massive uh, commercial real estate crisis right now is because so many companies are having to go back and try and renegotiate their mortgages right? Because they are, uh, they're amortized over a certain amount of years, but every five years or so, they have to refinance those and, and readjust the terms based on interest rates and a few other things. And they're unable to. So you're seeing these big buildings going back. Well, think about restaurants that are dealing with triple net leases. Restaurants that have their margins getting smaller and smaller and smaller because food prices are going up and they just can't raise prices fast enough. Um, Especially because if they do, if even if they were able to raise prices almost weekly because the cost of food, the cost of labor, the inability to get good labor, they would be squeezing their customers out even faster, right? So now think about when their lease is due. One of the only fixed payments in a restaurant's life, right, is their lease. For a certain amount of time, it's fixed. Now they go and they go back to their, their uh, landlord and landlord's like, I need more money. Or they're saying, hey, we'll take the same lease. We'll, we'll do it the same. And these, these restaurants are going, dude, we can't even keep up with that. We need lower. And then there's disputes. And then ultimately, the company that's leasing the property goes, we're done. So you're going to see way more of this coming up in the next six months. It says here, uh, she said, the spokesperson, we appreciate the community's support over the past 25 years and look forward to seeing guests at our Bloomington and Intergrove Heights restaurants, which are the ones closest to that. The spokesperson added that some staff members will be given the option to transfer to another location. So that means not all of them. Meanwhile, all employees are being offered severance pay, and that's for a certain amount of time until it's gone. Customers of the now shuttered restaurant took to its Facebook page to discuss the closure why was this location closed yesterday with no notice to either the public or worse yet the staff one person asked another said there there was they, they were always busy i wonder what happened someone who had discussed the issues faced with by the restaurant with a server said what i heard was it was a combination of things according to our server who we spoke to the last time we were there there were three uh priorities or perpetrator, sorry. First off, in the past year and a half, one of which was escorted out of the building, they're talking about managers. Uh, so one of the things they're saying, they're losing managers. They weren't able to hold good management staff. 
Plus, the pandemic killed business, which never fully recovered to pre-pandemic levels. Add to that Outback's decision to close underperforming stores during the past three years, and that sealed its fate. Most likely, the lease on the building was expiring as well, which is why they didn't renew their liquor license, which came to $8,100. With the city of Burnsville, for the last month, and a half of that remained open. Uh, Outback is far from the only restaurant to shut down locations in recent months. TGI Fridays has recently shut down its last remaining Idaho location. The move came after the company faced declining sales in 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. Chief executive officer at the time, Ray Blanchett, warned in a Bloomberg interview that 20% of its 386 restaurants would likely be forced to close. Other restaurant chains have been shutting down in Dalton, Alabama. This is not this not only includes TGI Fridays, but Hooters, Ruby Tuesdays, O'Shanley's as well. See, this is going to be, I think, the big story going into this next year. And let me know down in the comments what you are seeing right now as far as restaurant closures in your area. Um, restaurants that are still half full. I've still seen restaurants that have not fully brought out all of its tables. And why would they? They still have big spacing in their restaurant because they don't simply have the wait staff or the dishwashers in back to take on that load of people if they wanted to show up. In my little hometown, it's getting harder and harder to find a table because once again, there's just no staffing. Now, what's interesting is we did see a, a huge rush. Remember when everybody left their job and the heck with this, we're gonna live off of government stimulus. And then uh, people started to rush back into the workforce. Now, what's interesting is I don't believe that we're still fully there. Everywhere I go and talk to business owners, they're having a hard time getting good qualified employees. And when they're, and still today, and let me know now in the comments, if you're uh, someone that it hires individuals for your company or your business, let me know now in the comments because I'm hearing that still to this day, you'll call and out of 10 people, seven of them, when you say, hey, uh, see your resume here, your application, why don't you come on in for an interview? And they say, oh no, sorry, I was just doing this for the unemployment benefits. I think that's actually criminal. I think at that point you should be allowed to record and literally send it back and go, look, these people are just doing this, they're on the government dole. And that is going to cause a much, much larger problem. Why is that? Because I believe that coming soon, in the next two years, I believe that you're going to see the government say, we can't give unemployment benefits anymore. And I believe entitlements are going to be pulled in a way that you would, we've never seen in our entire life. Because quite frankly, the government's going to be tapped out. Right now, it's the employer. And I think next will be the government. And I think it's a very serious time. So as remember, as more people lose their jobs, that's more people that can't put money into the real economy and this economy shudders. All right, with that being said, I thank you so much for watching. The Economic Ninja is out.